Hello there and you're welcome. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a leather material using Substance Designer. Leather is very great and important, especially when you want to do some interior design for fabrics, for car seats, or upholstery, for uh, furniture, beds, leather. Let's just go ahead and see how we can create that in Substance Designer. Hello and welcome back. So before we begin creating our letter, it's very important for us to actually gather up a few reference images so that we can really see what letter, leather looks like and we can look at the details of that leather material. So for instance, I, I kind of like this one because this looks pretty nice. We can see it has some kind of like wrinkles like so along these edges and also we can actually uh, we can zoom in and look at this material and then realize that there are actually some you know kind of like uh, particles around it that looks like some polygonal shapes all around this material so that's why it's very important to at least have a reference or a couple of references you can just look at and you know kind of like basically see how this uh, material looks like like so so with that I'm just going to jump into Substance Designer and having studied at least uh, take a few minutes to actually study the uh, uh, material you're trying to create and then jump back into the software and try to imitate that using some basic nodes. So I'll just minimize this and I have Substance Designer opened up. So the first thing I'll do is to just create a new project. So I'll go to File, New and I'll create a new Substance Graph. I'll just call that uh, leather underscore mat, short for leather material. I'll make sure this is on metallic roughness because I might take this to Unreal Engine to apply it to some objects, but I'll just leave that at metallic uh, roughness and click OK. And this should open up a default nice interface where we can start creating our graph. So uh, let me just go ahead and quickly uh, dock this. I'll just reset the window and quickly, you know, customize the window so we can have the same workspace. So basically, I like having the 3D view docked with the Explorer and the 2D view docked with the library. And to do that is straight up. So all we need to do is just click here. And while we see Explorer, you know, changes the color to blue, we just left click that. And here on the base color, I'm just going to drag it down to the library and release. Now I'm sharing the library view with window with the base color window. 2d window and i'm sharing the um, explorer window with the cube window so the first thing i'll do is to quickly set up our material here and i'll just drag this view so we can see our properties real quick so uh, i'll first head over to our material view so here on the materials i'll go to, over to the default and I'll click on metallic roughness and click on tessellation plus displacement because I want to add just slight bump to this. So I'll turn up the tessellation factor to like eight and I'll bump up the scale to like uh, four. I think that's super okay. For my normal intensity, I'll just set that to a value of three just so I can have slightly uh, intense normals. For our ambient occlusion, I'll just bring in a horizon based ambient occlusion node so I'll hit the space bar I'll just type in HB and this is going to bring out the horizon based ambient occlusion and I'll just drag that and plug that into the ambient occlusion channel I'll leave the height channel at default and over here this is uh, slightly reflective so what I'll do is to go over to the uniform color for the roughness and I'll just bump this slightly towards the white that means it's non-metallic so it's not really reflective. Black means it's going to be highly reflective. You can see it's even reflecting our HDRI environment. So I'll just slide this over to 165 so I can just have you know, this very smooth uh, material. So for our normal, we've already set that for our normal. Also to quickly preview our material, what I'll do is just add in a neutral node. I could just use a blur node. And where are you? It's right here. Oops, so I made a mistake, so I'll just undo that. And okay, I think it's totally fine. Let's just drop in the blur node. And I undid something. Okay, that's totally fine. So what I'll do is to plug this into my channel. So I'll plug this output into the ambient occlusion. I'll plug this into the normal. And I'll also plug this, uh, I'll just leave it into the height as well. So I'll just plug this into my height map. And you can notice it's actually complaining right here. So what I'll do is just plug in this uniform color because it needs a grayscale 
input and this will be super fine. So we can start building our material after this basic setup. We are always going to, you know, plug in our materials you know, over into this blur node and let's drag the intensity and set that to zero. And let's just save our package. So let's go to file, save all. And I'll just go over to my designer tutorials and over in letter tut. I'll just save this as letter material so I could just have a nice package in case anything happens, I don't lose my project. So the first thing we'll do is to begin to create our base shape for our leather and a good node to start with is the Voronoi node because it looks like different uh, random polygons. So let's go over here, hit the spacebar and let's search for Voronoi and let's just click in the Voronoi which is the first one that comes in. So I'll just zoom in over here and we can see the shapes and patterns. So I'm going to set the scale to about four. I'll just drop this, this in to about four. And for our distortion intensity, what I'll do is just drag this to like say uh, 0.25 so we can actually see some randomness here. We don't want to always stay with the uh, default values. I believe that's, uh, that's not a bad value. So I'll just leave it at that. So another node I like to plug in to add some of those extra details is the cells node. So I'll hit the space bar go into the search and search for cells. I'll just drop in a cells one node and we can clearly see that the Voronoi and cells one look quite similar. So, but this is going to add some slight variations to our node. So for our scale, I'm going to kind of like set this up to make them smaller. I'll just leave it at say 88, so fine. And also for the disorder, I'll just drag this to about anywhere around 0.2 just to have some random distortion for this. And what I'm going to do next is combine the best of these two worlds. So I'll just drop in a blend node by clicking here. We can search. I'll just search for a blend, which is our atomic node. And I'll just drop in this blend node like so. So now that I have created that blend node, what I'm going to do is to set my mode. I'll take the foreground the Voronoi and plug this into the foreground and I'll take the cells one and plug this into the background and on the blend mode I'm going to set this to multiply so that we can actually see we have a slightly kind of like noisy cell here for our blend. If you don't like that output you can always turn down the opacity and this is going to lower the foreground but I'll just leave it at 0.94 just to leave it at this value. So what we're going to do next is to actually uh, get the edge data from our blend node using a very interesting node called the uh, distance node. So I'll just drag the output and I'll search for a distance and let's just drop in this distance node like so. Now this is going to uh, create something super funny right here. So what I'll do is to take in our blend and pass this into our source input so we can have this grayscale, you know, kind of like distance looking node. And then to balance this up, I'll just pass this into a levels node. So I'll just take the output, drag this, and let's just type in levels and drop in my levels node like so. So to change this value for the levels node, I'll click on here, which are the values for my levels. And I'll set this to, let's set our level in high. I'll just drag this to a mid value, say like 0.5. So our mid-level, I'll just leave my mid-level at 0.5 and I'll leave my level out low at this level as well. So let's go ahead and see our distance node and see if we can tweak anything. So for my maximum distance, I'll just drag this and set this to like, uh, I'm trying to aim for 100, but I think this is, it's actually fine over here. So I'll just leave it at this value I'll just go ahead and close it because my internet is interrupting our flow right here. So uh, I just set the distance node value to about, uh, I think, uh, 85. I think 85 is a good value. And we can also look in at our levels node like so. So the next thing we're going to do is to, uh, this is going to be our base, you know, mini details. And like I said, we could just plug this in directly and see how this looks like. And I'll open our cube. And we can actually see we have this uh, just nice uh, noisy stuff that looks like amoeba with some nice Voronoi on top. 
like so super weird but we'll actually go ahead and keep creating our uh, our uh, materials so let's go ahead and create another node we are going to use to begin to distort and break our shapes to make it much more uh, interesting and readable so next thing I'll bring in a Voronoi fractal so I'll select all these and drag these over and let's press the spacebar and let's search for a Voronoi and I'll just drag in the Voronoi fractal this has a lot more options and it kind of looks like the cloud 2 noise and let's go ahead and change those values for our fractal like so so let's take our scale and I think something's wrong with my uh, okay good so let's take our scale and I'll set this to about about 20 there ish I'm actually using 21.28 in case you want to use the same values I'm using and apart from that I'm also look for my distance intensity and just drag this a little bit slightly and I'll set this to about 0 0.2 I'm trying to go for 0.25 for my distortion intensity that's what I changed and then for my roughness I'll just set this uh, drag down and just set the roughness all the way to one to give it this kind of nice uh, you know kind of like break a broken uh, look also I'll add in a blur HQ grayscale so I can start blurring out our level node to kind of like blend this with this fractal so next I'll hit the space bar and I'll search for a blur HQ grayscale node I'll have dropped that. I'll just drag in my levels into the Blur HQ Grayscale. We can see what it's giving us. And then to combine the Voronoi Fractal and the Blur HQ Grayscale, I'll drop in a Blend node. So I'll drag in the Blend node. And I don't like how this node is just crossing here. It's making, it's obstructing. So I'll hold Alt, click on this edge, hold Alt, click on this edge. And basically the idea is to just to create a dot node or add a nice reroute so we could just kind of like have this cable go out of the way so it doesn't obstruct us often so next I'm going to take my Voronoi fractal and set that to my foreground and then for my blend node I'm going to set this to uh, let's try multiply I'll set this to min darken so we can have less of that effect and what I'll do is just drag my opacity to about halfway so we can actually see what we're having here so we can see those large shapes and we can see what it's doing we can connect this like so and we can see what it's doing here so it's actually hiding that large shape but we know it's actually uh, there so i'll just put this back where we were so we can just keep on working with our node so for our hq grayscale my intensity is at 10 my blur hq grayscale i'll just set that to 16 and i'll just set the quality of that blur all the way to one so we can have a nice you know value there so what i'm going to do next is to just uh, balance this out using the auto levels node so i can have a good zero to one range so i'll just drag the output and search for an auto levels and i'll just drop this in here so we can actually see it's bringing back some of those details and we can really see what we're working with right here awesome now to be able to combine my nodes right here what i'm using the blur node i'll just use a uh, a blend node to do my combination so I'll just drag this over here I'll just drag this and set this as my background and I'll just hold down shift and drag this and set this as my uh, output and I'll just drag this and plug this into the height as well and I can take my auto levels and plug this into my foreground and I can just get rid of the blur node because I want to just use a blend just so I can have the option to combine this now the reason why this height is peaked is because of our material so let's go ahead and quickly edit and change that so let's go to edit and what I want to do is to just drag down the scale like so so I don't have it you know too bumpy because it's kind of too bumpy for me right there so I'll just go ahead and set it at that value and I can go ahead and start creating some nice details for this leather material now what I want to do is to add some scratches on this uh, object so to do that I'll create I'll use the scratches generator so I'll go to my space bar and I'll search for scratch like so 
So here we have a nice node called the scratch uh, generator. And what I'm going to do is to just uh, generate this value. So for the spline number, I'll set this to double the amount. So I'll just set this to about 500. So I'll set it to the maximum value. So that's about uh, 512. And what I'm going to use is to use a triangle grid grayscale uh, node. So I'll just press the space bar and just do a triangle grid grayscale. And basically this node is going to have, you know, some kind of nice triangular grids. And what I'm going to do is just, you know, change the size just to make this uh, much smaller. So I'll just go ahead and reduce the scale by increasing uh, in bumping up the x amount so let's just drag the slider and set this to about uh, let's say uh, 53 and i'll set the y amount also to about the same value so we can have this kind of like noise going in here and i'll combine these two using a blend node so basically uh what i can do is let's i'll just drag this to 64 so i can make this quite small and i'll bring in a blend node and combine these two like so and what I'll do is to put my scratches under and my blend on top. And I'll just go ahead and change my blend mode. So first I'll change this to, let's try add mode. And then what I'll do is just drag down the opacity so I can get more of those scratches than the triangles. So you can actually see I have more of my scratches showing up, but I have this rough triangles at the background just so this can add a little uh, effect. So what I'll also do is to bring out a levels node to kind of like balance out the grayscale values. I want to do this manually, not using auto levels. So to do this, I'll go over to the levels parameter values and I'll start now making some changes. So for the in low, I'll just set this to like 0.3. My level in high, I'll leave that as one because I like the way it's hiding the background over there. So I'll leave that at, let's try 0 0.93. It's not a bad value for my level in mid. I'll just drag this down to about this value like so, just to bring back more of that. So I'll just leave it at 0.47. And my level out high, I'll just drag this in to about point, let's say 0.4. So you can see, basically, if you want to hide any serious detail you can use the levels node to hide information especially about you know your scratches and all that you can actually use the levels to hide the uh, information and next what i'm going to do is to plug this into our uh, final details so what i'll do over here is to blend this with let's take the output here and uh, let's just combine this with this guy over here and I believe this is our auto levels. Our auto levels is coming in here and blending. What I will do is to create another blend node. So I'll just drag this to the back, create another blend node, and we'll take our input like so and plug this into this blend node and take in the input of our blend like so. Sorry, I'll just drag this output and put that. It always breaks when I try to uh, drag that into the output. So next, I'm going to take my output and then use a levels node to just balance things out. So I'll drag this. I'll search for a levels node and just place it right here. So with this levels node, what I'm also going to do is to drag an auto levels. So I'll just go out here and I'll search for my auto levels just to have a nice balance like so. And what I'll do is just pass this into the foreground. Let's just pass this into the foreground like so, so we can see what we have here. Like that. Or let's bring back our blower node. I'm being indecisive right now, so I'll just set this to zero. I just want to have just one single input like that. And I'll delete this one. So our blur node came back. We need a round of applause for that. And I'll just drag in the height and plug this in with my intensity set to zero. So what I'm also going to do is to go to my levels property and start playing around with this so that I can just bring back some of that uh, details for that material like so. So you can see we have our auto levels here, but we're not connecting this to uh, 
any value. So this is the final output. I'll just drag this in and plug this into our node group like so. And then we can actually see this material like that. All right, super fine. So what I'm actually noticing is that our triangle grid, let's try 128, if we can bump that up. And let's try this, let's set this to 128 as well, just to bump this up and make this very kind of like rough and grainy so we can actually see what we have right here for our leather material. And since this is just going in here, I don't think I need any extra uh, cable here. So we just have this right here. All right, so uh, let's just move on and begin to work with our color. So to create our color, what I like doing is to extract information from the normal node. There's a very good node called the curvature node. So I'll just drag this back and just take an output from the normal node. And I'll just search for a curvature. So once I have this, you can see what it's doing is getting some of that information and also mixing this information as well. Now I've actually noticed that these might be too large for leather. So before we move on with the curvature, let's go ahead and see what's happening with this. So we plug this guy here and what it's doing is to, uh, we can hide more of that over here. We can use our levels to hide more of this guy. This one over here. Let's look at our blend. If I drag the opacity much, you can see I'm bringing in more of that leather. So I'll just drag this down. And what I can do is try swapping these. So I'll just swap over here. Okay, that's not uh, helping. We can always end up making this extremely smaller. So let's go to our triangle grid. And what I can do is to set this to, let's try 512 by 512, just to bump that scale and make this quite smallish. And I kind of like, like it that way. And we can see some of that noise is actually passing through. So that's one way to do it. And another way, like I mentioned earlier on, is that we can use this and use that to kind of like kill and hide some of that information. So we drag this down. We're not seeing any of that uh, triangle grid. We're seeing more of the scratches. So if we begin to drag in our mid-level in, we can actually uh, see some of our roughness come in like so. So that's one way. This is basically a slider you can use to actually control the scale of how this is actually being shown. So let's get back to our curvature node and keep on working with our color. So what I'm going to do is to take the information I have already from my uh, blur node and then I can mix this with the curvature. And then we, from here, what we can do is to create a gradient map. So let's have our gradient our gradient map. Let's just drop this in here and plug this into the color channel. And this uniform color, we can have a use for this. We can take a color and blend this in. So already it's using black. Let's go to the gradient editor and create a point for the foreground. So the values I'm going to use for the foreground for my gradient, I'll make this kind of like light value. So I'll go over red and just switch this to make this kind of like light. And then here at the quarter section over here. I'll just use a slightly, you know, kind of like brownish color. And then for the background, I'll just use a dark color here. I'll just use this dark value like so. Let's make this slightly red and just use this like that. So this is what we're getting for our gradient map. So let's pass in this info. So we're not getting any input, but this is what we're actually getting on our base color out. So let's see here. Let's set this to a dark value like so. And basically I'm just winging it and seeing how this is going to look like on our material. So I'll just drag this over here. And we can actually begin to see how noisy it is, right? So we can see some of that noise, some of those shapes kind of like drop in like so. 
So what I'll do next is to use, let's take an in information from our grayscale image and just blend that into our curvature. So I'll create a blend node and I'll take in my curvature and just pass this into our blend in. And then here I'll just use some of our grayscale value and pass that as well into here. And what I'll do is to just take the output and pass it into our gradient map. We can actually see what we have here. We've seen some of those scratches, kind of like showing around the edge. And then over here for our blend node, let's just add in this uh, uniform color. So we have our curvature, we have our blend, we're passing into this uh, gradient map. Let's have another blend node over here. So I'll select this and then click on the blend so we can have a blend to pass through this. And where we have our uniform color, what I want to do is to just set a uniform color to blend this in. So I'll just look for a nice red value and just pick this value here. That's hash. Uh, Hextone 854319. So that's what I'm using, and I'll just pass this. This is my foreground, and we can actually see we're getting something super reddish, like so. I believe I can swap positions like that. I kind of like like it this way, and then we can change the opacity and just drag down a bit so we can have less of that color actually passing in through our object like so and what we can always do is to add a HSL value over here so I'll hit the space bar and search for our HSL and drop in our HSL value and basically we can either darken this material you know, bump up the saturation and then we can slightly change the hue if we want. So we can just use that to change how this object is actually looking like. And let's just go over here into our node and search for any sections and try to swap materials. So over here, I just kind of like swapped this and I'll just drag the opacity like so, just to add and make a few changes. So I'm trying to bring back some of those scratches around. So I'm just turn down the opacity. And we can actually see what we're doing. We're bringing in back some of that information right here. So let's try changing this as well. And then for our blend node, let's bump up our opacity and set this higher as well. All right, so that's going to be a uh, very, very rough and basic representation of this material. And remember, you can always go back, make changes, and create some kind of nice scratch leather. And remember, like I said, if we want to kind of like get rid of some of the details all we have to just go over here and begin to play around with our sliders just to hide in or bring back some of those details on this leather material so there you have it it's a very basic material and hope you had fun working on this material as well